So once you understand these six core methods, you're going to be able to be more profitable as a photographer, make more money and do less work. Now let's get into it. Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside of this video, we're talking about profitability as a photographer. So if you are looking to run a photography business and make money from your photos, this video is for you. It's very, very important. It's information that I wish someone had given to me early on in my career and would have saved me a whole lot of work and unnecessary trouble. So I'm giving it to you for free. I'm Ryan here at Signature Edits, and most importantly, this channel is all about teaching you how to take better photos, how to be a better editor, and how to make money in photography, how to grow your business. So let's dive into it first by telling you exactly how you can make $980,000 as a photographer. You ready? You start with a million dollars and you buy 20 grand worth of photography gear. Okay, seriously though, we're talking about photography marketing and that joke is kind of relevant and kind of painful because the truth is that most photographers don't make a lot of money. And there's a few reasons for this, but the main reason, what it comes down to is something called, oh, come on, let's get this pen, the pen of lightning and information. What it comes down to is a little word called profitability. The problem is that most photographers, they just plain don't have any, no money, and so they're sad. Now, how do we actually work on our profitability? There's six key ways that we need to be focusing on as a photographer in your marketing, in your messaging, in all of your pricing and everything you do. And that is really centered around, as a business, increasing the lifetime value of your customer. Now, what is lifetime value? It's a marketing term we use to describe how much a customer is worth once they walk in the door, they first book with you, how much is that person worth on average to you as a business? Now, Starbucks has an LTV of somewhere around $4,000, which seems insane when you think about it, right? Because they're selling coffee at $3 a time. But the thing is with Starbucks, you don't buy coffee just once. Once you're a Starbucks drinker, you go every single day over and over and over because you are just Java crazy, right? So over time, Starbucks has calculated their LTV, their lifetime value as $4,000 per customer, which means in theory, if the average customer is worth $4,000 to Starbucks, how much can Starbucks spend to acquire a customer on their marketing, on their messaging, on giving away free samples, whatever it is Starbucks is doing, how much can they afford to spend before they're no longer making money? Well, logically, it's somewhere shy of $4,000, right? Now, this is important to photography because if we head over here to our black slate, if your LTV, oh no, we need to change our color. That's just not acceptable. If your LTV is, let's say, $2,000, you can afford to spend about $2,000 before you're losing money, right? Now, preferably, you'd be spending much less than this, let's say $500, and then if your LTV is 2000 your cost per acquisition, that's called CPA, is $1,500. That was not good math. If your cost per acquisition is $500, <laughs> there we go, <laughs> your actual profit is going to be $1,500. And out of that profit, you've obviously got to account for the hours that it takes you to work, for the cost of your gear, for all of that good stuff if you're outsourcing, hiring other people to edit for you, that kind of stuff. All that has to come out of there and still give you some money left over or you're just working for free. And that's the problem that most photographers don't realize. You sign up, you've got a camera, you say, you know what, I've got a camera, I can make some money. I'll do, you know, a shoot for 10 bucks or 100 bucks or 200 bucks or whatever it is. When I started out, I had the genius idea of charging less than everyone else in my industry. So I was doing weddings at the time and the average wedding photographer was charging, I think, somewhere around $3,000 in my area, okay? Might be higher for you, might be lower in your area. But I said, you know what? The average photographer charges $3,000. I'm going to charge like 1000 bucks. I'm going to give it away for so cheap. And I'm going to book like 10 times more weddings, right? In theory. Now, the problem is that I wasn't really thinking that by doing this, my LTV, because people generally only get married once, they'd only hire me once, was around $1,000 per customer which means that when I accounted for my gear, for my outsourcing, for all of the different costs associated with what I was doing and the hours I was working and editing, I was making not a whole lot of money. <laughs> now, in order to increase your profitability and do more 
profit with less work, we need to increase our LTV. Because if my LTV was $10,000, then all of a sudden, the gear, the outsourcing, the cost, the hours, the editing, it doesn't really add up in the same way. All of this is going to say the same price. And so overall, I'm going to be way more profitable, right? Let's say that this cost me 800 bucks. Before, I was only making $200 per client. Now, I'm going to make $9,200 per client. Big difference. Okay, now how do we actually increase the LTV of our customers? That's the question you need to ask yourself. And there are six ways to do it when it comes down to it, no matter what kind of business you're doing. If you're in a photography business, if you're in the video business, if you are selling cats to old ladies, it's all going to come down to these six core things. Number one, to increase our LTV, we can increase our price. That's probably the most obvious. Now, most people assume if you charge less, you're going to get more bookings. And this is true. When I started out charging $1,000 or $1,200 for a service that most people were charging $3,000 for, I did get a lot of bookings. But there are a few problems with that. One, number one problem, obviously your costs are about the same. So it's kind of interesting is if you look at a Gucci bag or a Dolce & Gabbana bag, or I have no idea what kind of fashion bags are expensive, and then you look at a cheap bag from Target or Walmart, the actual cost of the materials involved is not that different. So Gucci might spend $200 on material costs and mark up their bag to five grand. Walmart is probably spending, you know, not $200 because they're using fake leather and the zippers are maybe not as good a quality, whatever. I mean, let's say they're spending $15 per bag. So it's still way less. It's 10 times less. But how much can they sell that bag for? Because they're a Walmart brand. Let's say maybe they sell it for about 40 bucks. Now, if we actually look at the profitability of this, Walmart is making $25 a bag. Whereas Gucci is making like $4,800 a bag. Now, which kind of business would you rather be in? Which one is easier to scale? Well, obviously, it's going to be Gucci. And why is that? Because they have a higher LTV. They have a higher budget for marketing. So they can go out, they can spend all the money they need to on marketing. They can spend more money on getting a better product, better customer experience, all that good stuff. They can hire other people to work for them. And this is going to apply to your same studio as well, because inside of your photography studio, you can go ahead and spend far more to acquire a customer if you're charging more. You can spend far more on giving your customer an amazing experience if you're charging more. If you're charging less, that margin is smaller and smaller and smaller, so you can't provide that amazing service, and you're making less money anyways. Okay? So, number one way to increase our LTV is to increase the price. Number two, LTV, we decrease our cost. And how does that increase our LTV? Well, it sort of doesn't, but increases the number of customers. Which effectively is going to increase the amount of revenue we're creating as a business, but because we're less profitable, we've decreased our cost, we're going to have all those other issues that we talked about earlier. Number three, we've got resell to repeat customers. So if you're a wedding photographer, this is kind of tough unless you happen to photograph divorces as well. <laughs> but reselling doesn't have to be the same as just selling them the same experience over and over and over again. It could be as simple as, okay, we sold them a wedding package and then next year we're going to do an anniversary package, that kind of thing. And by doing that, we're increasing our LTV. So let's say that we're in a market where most photographers are charging two grand for a wedding and we can't charge more than that. We're just using weddings. This would apply to portraits, whatever it is that you're doing. Now, two grand. That's the average in your city. You can't get away with charging much more. Otherwise, you're just not booking people. Let's say. Now, Jim just shoots weddings. So he can afford to spend, let's say, $1,000 to acquire a client. And that'll still leave him with $1,000 profit. And Jim is doing okay. He's making some money. This is all right. Now, Tom, on the other hand, has crafted a great system where he knows that, okay, he's got his weddings, but he's actually really good at keeping up with his clients. And so he'll follow up with them and he'll do anniversary shoots. He does um, shoots for them when they have their first kids, some family shoots every year. He gets them on a continuing program where every single year they do a shoot with him. Let's just say, okay, they're really loyal to Tom. And so every year 
let's say he has an extra $400 just the shoot. And he could be selling prints on top of that, making even more money. But let's just say 400 bucks a year on average. And his average client, let's say they're in it for five years. Okay. So now Tom has an LTV of $4,000 because he's got that original 2000 from the wedding. And he's got another $2,000 from those follow-up services. So now Tom knows that Jim can really only afford to spend around $1,000 marketing to get a client. Whereas Tom, he's making $4,000 over time, so he could even afford to spend $2,000 to acquire that same customer. Why is this important? Because if he's spending $2,000 where Jim is charging $2,000, he's actually going to be putting Jim out in business. He's going to get all the customers. Jim can't afford to keep up, and all of a sudden, Tom is making all the money. I'm not saying you should do this to all the photographers in the industry. It's just the math. And so when you actually figure out your LTV and you increase it by reselling to your customers, you're going to be making a lot more money over time. And so you can afford to do these things um, that most people couldn't otherwise. So there's a huge advantage to that. Also, you can rest in the fact that you put a whole lot of work into acquiring this customer over early on, right? If you watch that office episode and uh, Ryan is like, okay, so Michael, how much does it cost to acquire a customer? Or which is, which is cheaper, to acquire a customer or to um, keep the same customer? And Michael says, well, obviously it's to acquire a new customer. And Ryan says, well, no, it's actually 10 times more expensive to get a new customer than it is to keep the same old customer. And that's an actual true stat or somewhere around there. So let's just say that it's 10 times more expensive well, it's way easier for Tom to keep marketing to these clients, make more money over time, than it is for Jim to go out and find new clients every single time. So when you get a new customer, you want to do everything you can in your photography business to keep that person coming back. You want them to have an amazing experience. You want to follow up with them. You want to spend your time and your energy there because it's going to take a lot less energy to get them to spend more money with you than a brand new person who doesn't know you, doesn't trust you, hasn't experienced your work before. Hopefully, unless your work is bad, in which case it might be easier to get a new customer, but then we have other problems. <laughs> okay, so uh, the number four way to increase our LTV is upsells and increased services. So that would be just upgrading them to another package. So in our earlier example, Jim says, okay, $2,000, I'm going to give you absolutely everything your heart can imagine. And let's say Jim is now shooting boudoir and Tom is also shooting boudoir. And Tom says, you know what? I actually am going to price my services at $9.97 and that's for just the two hour shoot. And it's got a baby photo book or just digitals only. And then Tom books his client, Sam or Cindy or whoever it is. And Sam says, okay, great. I'm going to book with you. Tom sits down. It's about a month before the session, he sits down, he sends her an email and he says, Sam, I have um, booked you for the 997 package, but, but I actually have an amazing deal with this album company that they're 40% off right now. Normally I'd have to charge you an extra two grand to include this album, but right now I can afford to do it for a thousand bucks. Would you like to add that to your package? Okay, great. Sam says, of course, that'd be awesome. So now Sam is spending $2,000 because we've upsold her. Okay. Now we get to the actual shoot and it's amazing. It's really fun. It's really great. And so Tom does the shoot, and then afterwards, Sam comes in to see the prints, and Tom says, you know what, I have some amazing wall art and flat prints that we could sell you, and would you be interested in that kind of a thing? And Sam buys another $500 worth of product, right? So that's how we can increase our LTV by offering upsells, different packages, nothing new, right? Number five. Oh, we've got cross-sells. So an upsell is selling more of the same thing or selling a better version of the same thing. And cross-sell is selling a different thing. So Tom, book Sam. She spent her money already on boudoir. She's really happy. It's great. She looks sexy as. Well, Tom then says to Sam, Sam, you're getting this boudoir shoot done because you're engaged and engagement present. You worked with me already. Would you be interested in booking the wedding? Right? Cross-sell. Different service, but overall you're increasing the LTV by providing that service and selling something different. So now Tom has made an extra $2,000. And then later he might sell a family shoot and that's an extra $500, right? So we can cross sell all day long to increase our LTV. Number five, we've got down sells. So in our earlier example, Tom is talking to Sam. Hey Sam, hey Tom. Wow. Doesn't Sam just have some voluptuous hair? Okay, so Tom, Sam, they're talking. Sam isn't interested in the album. She just doesn't want it. 
He's like, okay, that's okay. I have 40% off of this package and that album I could give you for a thousand bucks, but I also have this other album that I think you'd really like. It's a coffee table book. It's a little bit smaller, simpler, and that's why we can make it cheaper. That one's only $400. Would you be interested in that one? And then Sam says, yeah. So what happened? Did Tom lose a thousand dollar sale? Well, not really. This was an upsell that he went for. And then when she said no, he made $400 by doing that downsell. Okay, so if you don't have downsells in your packages, that might be something you want to consider adding. Lastly, the last way to increase your LTV is to actually, oh geez, one, two, three, four, five, six. That was the last one. Joke's on me. That is actually number six. But I have a last note in here, so let's keep going. So we've got our six ways. We can obviously charge more. We can charge less. And more customers. We can resell multiple sessions. We can upsell to a different package. We can cross sell to a completely different service. And here's another idea here. Let's say that you have um, your photography and you can't really upsell people. They're not so interested. Well, let, you do portrait shoots or you do boudoir or whatever it is. Why don't you make a partnership with another company in town that you can network with and say, okay, if I send you a client, you want to do like a 20% commission or something like that. Now, this doesn't work in every industry in every single situation, but you could work with a makeup artist and say, hey, will you give me 20 bucks for every customer I refer to you? And she says, yeah, sure. And so in this situation, you could cross sell a completely different service. So for photographers, most of the time that's going to be makeup, clothing. You could work with a local clothing company, something like that, dress boutique, whatever. Just referrals, essentially. And then we're cross selling that way. Okay, and six, of course, we have the downsell. Okay, so that's our six ways to actually increase our LTV. I want you to sit down, grab a piece of paper, and actually think about which of these you're employing right now and which ones could you start using. How could you creatively apply this to your business? That's where you're really going to get ideas is when you sit down, brainstorm it for yourself, say, okay, within my context, where I am, what kind of photography I do, what could I maybe do right now that I'm not currently doing to increase that LTV? Okay. Now I just want to say one more thing when it comes to actually charging less, because you might be making this mistake. You probably are. If you're starting out as a photographer, you're charging less because you don't have the portfolio. You don't have the work. You don't have the experience and that's fine. There's two different reasons to charge less. The first is to get more customers. Okay. Now the problem with doing this is that you wind up, let's say having your prices and you get double the bookings never works this way, but let's just say in a perfect world, you get double the bookings. What's going to happen. You're going to do twice the work for the same amount of money. But that's just the same amount of revenue. Now this is really important. Your costs aren't going to change much when you charge less. So your costs are now doubled as well. So effectively, you're going to be half as profitable. You're going to lose that cost because now instead of doing five weddings and spending 500 bucks a wedding, you're doing 10 weddings and spending 500 bucks a wedding and that's five grand instead of 2,500 bucks. Okay. So that's the first issue with charging less. But one reason you might want to charge less is because you're actually kind of supplementing the way that you get paid. So you can get paid with dollars, obviously, but you can also get paid with experience and you can get paid with portfolio. Oh, hello. And you can get paid with network connections. So if you're doing a shoot for free with the chance to actually meet and interact with other vendors, to me, that's not free. You're actually gaining from that experience. If you're doing it to get more experience or build your portfolio, you're getting compensated in the value that you can extract from that, right? So I've done free shoots in the past where I've been able to create some amazing portfolio work that then booked paid work for me in the future. So that's one reason to price yourself lower that I think can actually pay off because overall you are getting paid. It's just in a non-monetary format, right? However, very, very dangerous thing that you need to know when it comes to charging less. Those who pay the least expect most, period. 
every single customer I've worked with, whether it's been in photography or in other business, the people who pay the least for things always expect the most. They're going to be the hardest to service. They're never going to be happy. And they're the people who are so interested in value and nickel and diming that no matter what you do, they're never going to give you five stars. They're always going to be three or four stars because they just, you know, I paid good money for this and I would have expected da, 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 da. or they come back to you with 10 rounds of revisions. It's just my experience. The less you charge, the more you're going to have to produce. It's this weird backwards law of people who pay for quality and receive quality are happy. People who expect to have quality but don't want to pay anything are the people who are never going to be happy. So that's just something to be aware of. And I would highly suggest to you that you increase your prices. Because what happens is there are two possible options. If you increase your price, you are going to book less clients. That's just a fact. But it's not as few as you'd think. Let's say that you charge a thousand bucks. That's kind of where I was. Literally the next year, actually I think it was the same year, I said, to heck with this, I'm gonna start charging three thousand dollars because I've got so many weddings at this point. I just want to make more and book less. So I charge three times the amount. Now what's funny is that I didn't cut my bookings by three times. What wound up happening is maybe I got 50% of the bookings, probably got more. But let's say I charged three grand and I got 50% less bookings as a result. So what happens here? Let's say it's 10 weddings booked at three grand, whereas I could have booked 30 weddings at a thousand bucks. Actually, that's wrong. <laughs> 15 at three grand versus 30. With this, I'm making 45 grand because I've booked 15 weddings. That's half the amount, but I've charged three times as much. So I'm charging three grand per wedding at 15 weddings. That's 45 grand. Whereas if I were charging less, I was just saying, I'm going to be as cheap as possible. Cheapest option in town. Cheap as chips. I'd make 30K. But the difference, of course, is that this is doing 30 weddings and this is doing 15 weddings. Now, which Ryan in this situation do you think will be happier? The one who's shooting 15 weddings and getting paid 45 grand or the one who's doing twice as much work and making, what is that, 15 grand less? Significant. So with all that said, you always want to work on increasing your price versus decreasing because what happens when you decrease your price is the opposite. You are going to book a few more, but you're going to wind up doing way more work And in the end, it's not going to be double or triple just because you've halved your prices. You're going to wind up booking maybe 25% more bookings or 50% more. And in the end, it's very, very hard to make these numbers work. It's really, really hard to make more money by charging less. 90% of the time, you're going to lose money. So that's a reason to keep your prices, prices high. I'd always encourage you, be the best in your industry, in your town. Charge the most and provide the best service. That's what you want to be. You want to be Gucci. You don't want to be Walmart because Walmart only competes and only dominates the way they do because they've built an empire over years and years and years selling to millions of people. You don't want that kind of business. Trust me, it's a headache. You want less clients who are happier with the work you provide and you want to be the best in what you do. It's just way more satisfying. <laughs> so that is my two cents. Six ways that you can increase the LTV of your customer. Hopefully, once you start thinking about that, understanding that process, you could be more profitable as a photographer. If this video was helpful, can you do me a favor? Hit that like button, leave a comment below. Which of these do you think you could apply to your business and subscribe if you want more content like this? Lastly, if you want to build your business, work on your marketing and just increase your profitability, make sure you check out the Photography Marketing School over at SignatureEdits.com where you can sign up and for one low, low price, <laughs> I sound like an infomercial, you can sign up. It's an investment, but at the end of the day, I've put all the information I've learned over my years as doing wedding photography and doing photography of all kinds, just in marketing, branding, building your business and getting clients. So if you want to check that out, go ahead, head to signatureedits.com and sign up. All right, I will see you in the next video. If this video is helpful, once more, hit that like button. In the meantime, create something awesome. Peace out.